Hello, everyone. Um, I'd like to thank SciArc, particularly um, Ben Casera and Liz Lee for the opportunity to present here today. Um, our contact with SciArc has been ongoing for many years, and this summer we had the opportunity, along with DJS Associates, for our first shared work experience scanning the Washington Monument, which proved valuable for all three organizations. Um, first of all, let's everybody ratchet things down a little bit from the last presentation. Um, <laughs> that was a lot, and that uh, was really neat, but what you're going to see here is nothing like that. So um, the programs that, um, that I'm involved with um, include the Historic American Building Survey, which is the federal government's first historic preservation program, and the companion programs, the Historic American Engineering Record and Landscape Survey. Um, we've had nearly a decade of experience with uh, 3D laser scanning technology and have utilized it since 2005 on over 75 projects. And let's see if I can... And these range from the Statue of Liberty to the Space Shuttle Discovery, from the Hyos of Hawaii to the totem poles in Alaska, from the stairs of the Carlsbad Caverns to the Civil War ironclad Cairo at Vicksburg, and from the 12th century Victory Towers at Ghazni, Afghanistan, to the World War I cemeteries in Belgium. Our small but extremely talented staff has gained substantial expertise in utilizing digital technology to help record historic engineering, architectural, and landscape sites. I'll get the hang of this in a minute. There we are. Uh, we use 3D laser scanning technology primarily as a tool to derive one of our principal products, the measured and interpretive drawings that join large format photographs and historical reports to become part of our permanent collection at the Library of Congress. Those drawings must conform by law to the Secretary of the Interior standards for architectural engineering and landscape documentation, meaning they must adequately convey the significance or value of the resources, be accurately prepared from reliable sources, be durable, standard, and reproducible, and be clear and concise. 3D laser scanning helps us capture some of the initial site data, and we create models and meshes to render the point cloud data into usable forms for presentation and interpretive purposes, um, and for flattening into 2D architectural drawings. We have learned over the years that digital data capture, preparation, and presentation when done with precision and an accurate end product is the goal, have a steep learning curve, involve multiple complex software packages that do not always play well together, are labor intensive on both the front end and back end, and vary from site to site. Data capture utilizing 3D laser scanning alone is rarely sufficient to provide enough accurate information to portray a site consistent with conventional architectural standards and almost always benefits from utilizing complementary techniques such as traditional survey and hand measuring. The processing phase requires the ability to read and massage the point cloud in such a way that is consistent with the resource and can be further worked into an accurate architectural rendering. As preservationists, our work with historic sites involves three primary functions, the preservation and stewardship of the sites themselves, the creation of a permanent record of their significance, and their presentation and interpretation to the public. Digital data capture and presentation offer some unique opportunities to accomplish these tasks in new ways that speaks to those who will care for and visit these sites in the future. But digital techniques and products do not always substitute in whole or in part for the traditional ways we've accomplished these functions. Perhaps more importantly, digital data capture and preparation do not alter the basic trade-offs among quality, speed, and cost the iron triangle of project scope and management. What follows are some of the lessons we've learned in over a decade of 3D documentation. As a way of grounding ourselves in the physical world, um, it's always often useful to ask, in what ways do the digital products, that, um, do digital products help preserve the sites and structures that we scan? It's one thing to say that we will digitally preserve a site it's another to provide critical tools for the preservation of the site itself. Many of those who purchase laser scanning, laser scanning services do so to assist in the physical preservation of historical sites. In a region-wide survey conducted by the University of Colorado at Denver for the National Park Service's Intermountain Region, entitled Research and Recommendations for 3D Digital Documentation Program Implementation, better than nine out of 10 respondents indicated 
that the quantity of digital data collected via 3D laser scanning was appropriate for the task, but two-thirds indicated that data management and archiving fell below or barely met expectations, and a slightly smaller number indicated that access to sufficient hardware and or software would encourage, encourage them to use digital data more extensively, thus reinforcing the notion that large file size, numerous overlapping software packages, and steep learning curves greatly impact the ever-shrinking budgets of historic site stewards and make ongoing use of laser scanning less likely rather than more likely. Historic structure and cultural landscape reports guide the preservation planning process for many historic site stewards providing our project architects and engineers with critical information for meeting the Secretary of the Interior standards for the treatment of historic properties. But there's little to indicate that 3D laser scanning technologies is being used to help develop these products. For site stewards, existing condition drawings are essential, providing them with the data in a usable format necessary to stabilize, restore, rehabilitate, or reconstruct historic structures or landscapes. 3D laser scanning can be a useful way to obtain raw data necessary to develop these drawings with several significant caveats. The time that time is taken in the field to ensure that the site is accurately presented and in the data that's gathered, that the scanner acquired data is supplemented with data gathered by more traditional means such as survey and hand measuring to fill information gaps and again, that time is taken post-capture to accurately translate and interpret scanner-acquired data to formats usable to historic site stewards and specialists. There's been a tendency to treat 3D laser scanning as a panacea for the time and expense of traditional field work. Self-described by early promoters as scan and can, the technology was envisioned as enabling rapid deployment from one historic site to the next with quick capture of data that could then be stored and later massaged into more use useful formats. This is a very fruitful approach for resources in immediate danger, and one of the things I was struck with in the presentation just before lunch was the, what was it, an hour turnaround for the winery in California that was damaged by the earthquake where they had the, the um, earth movers propping up the wall, and they turned that data around, got it right back to them for use in dealing with that catastrophe at that moment. That's pretty neat stuff. Um, so this laser scanning is great for um, for getting into these places really quick, gathering the data and getting out. Um, and it's definitely better, some information is better than no information at all. But we should recognize the shortcomings of this approach and strive wherever possible to avoid its limitations. Um, these slides on uh, the far side, the hand measured um, uh, HABS rendering and a more recent laser scan show how important data can be missed in the scanning process if the raw data is not field verified for accuracy before leaving the site. Similarly, um, our office recently received drawings of the Taos Pueblo as addendum to the photogrammetrically measured and hand-drawn 1974 HABS renderings of the Taos Pueblo shown here. We couldn't accept these for a sessioning into the collection because they're characterized by marked inconsistencies within and between drawings. They missed details, the perspectives varied, along with random labeling and missing construction material references. And then we also asked if we have one set of drawings, do we need another? Um, in these examples, we also note that the end purposes of the documentation is reflected in its quality. For an online archive, the strong tendency for quick capture, narrow precision, and almost immediate availability can often trump attention to detail and accuracy. For site stewards, there's no substitute for accuracy. 3D laser scanning is capable of providing much of the underlying data, but additional field time, supplemental non-3D measuring techniques, and adequate post-capture, once again, are crucial. At this time, 3D digital data is most use usable by site stewards when rendered as line drawings, which do not require up-to-date software and hardware platforms, and can be easily duplicated, carried to, used, and marked up on site. English Heritage in its very thoughtful guidelines, 3D laser scanning for heritage, notes that utilizing point cloud data to generate line drawings is, quote, not a fully automatic process and requires skill and expertise on the part of the users, end quote. Um, this is something of an understatement. As illustrated by these images of the Bravo test stand at NASA's Santa Susana facility, the process entails manipulating point clouds by cropping and 3D orbiting, converting it to solid model or mesh surface, 
and finally flattening the 3D model to obtain a set of drawings, a set of lines rather for drawings. Each step involves a choice of software packages and generally mandates a powerful hardware configuration. The software hardware maze is a terrain of shifting sands where draftsman and beta tester become indistinguishable. A labor historian looking at the, what we'll now call the star cave in my office, um, might be tempted to characterize it as um, the 21st century's last bastion of the artisanal mode of production. In the end, the 3D and 2D graphics are, in the words of the Smithsonian's Gunter Weibel, quote, lovingly handcrafted, a concept often overlooked or glossed over in this age of immediate digital gratification. But navigating the software hardware morass is only one aspect of the complicated transformation of point cloud data. The final product, whether website, fly-through or pano tour, measure drawing, et cetera, will guide the processor in each step, in each decision of the many made along the way. Our line drawings conform in design and format to the standards of the architecture profession and are easily usable by restoration, rehabilitation, or reconstructing project architects and engineers. Much in the way our measured drawings of photogrammetrically obtained data of each stone of the Washington Monument in 1995 result, guide, resulted in a set of drawings that guided not only the restoration of the monument in the early 2000s, but also its stabilization and repair after the 2011 Virginia earthquake. To get from the point cloud to the 2D drawings requires knowledge of the way laser scan present layers of data and an understanding of the architectural conventions that determine how specific views and details are represented and of the line weights that add depth and clarity. Um, for example, the windows represented in this roof plan drawing generated from 3D scans appear in the raw point cloud but really shouldn't appear in a measured drawing. But when you are processing the layers from 3D data, you've got to make, you've got to be trained to be able to distinguish what should and what shouldn't appear if your end product is a roof plan. Um, a different kind of example is the mess hall at Prince William Forest Park in Virginia. Note how the drawings explicate the unique construction features of the window sash, that when the lower sash is dropped down, that turns that building into an open air pavilion. And only time spent getting to know that building and figuring out how to represent that particular feature would enable us to develop drawings that then guide restoration and preservation um, stewards in keeping that building alive and well. To recap, the use of laser scanning in the field has a, has a tendency to reduce the time spent with the resource, increasing the chances that significant features are missed. Similarly, point cloud data is very raw, requiring a sizable investment in software, hardware, time, and skill to render it usable for physical preservation purposes. Investing time in capture and processing will drive up project costs, but result in products of higher quality and greater accuracy. Now, one of the primary reasons we document historic sites also is to create a permanent record for future generations. Charles Peterson, an early organizer of the HABS program, argued in 1933, quote, that it is the responsibility of the American people that if the great number, greater number of our antique buildings must disappear through economic causes, they should not pass into unrecorded oblivion, end quote. Similarly, Ben Kassira refers to CyArk's mission as ensuring that our collective human memory is not lost. It's somewhat ironic that as digital technologies advance, the most durable records remain the older hard copies. Baseline documentation created by heritage documentation programs, the measure drawings, large formats, and historical reports, are completed on materials tested for a 500-year shelf life and deposited at the Library of Congress as they have been since the program's founding in 1933. The library makes available online digital versions in downloadable, publishable formats and stores the original hard copy documentation in state-of-the-art facilities at Fort Meade, complying in full with the Secretary's secretary standards on durability mentioned above. The lack of industry standards for laser scanning and similar born digital technologies and the proprietary software that facilitates the transition from point cloud to 3D models and 2D line drawings discourage the library from preserving those intermediate formats. The National Archives, where we are today, currently pre-accessions only a limited number of file formats, and the National Park Service, which faces its own stewardship costs for the historic sites it maintains, cannot afford the millions of dollars it would cost annually to protect its own electronic records from file and media degradation. 
Thus, our formal hard copy documentation is best protected, is better protected now than it was prior to the opening of the library's Fort Meade facility, but we still face the challenge and expense of preserving our ever-growing bank of digital data. I won't say too much about the costs of digital data preservation and will defer to the experts at Iron Mountain and others for reliable figures on that. But some highly reputable sources suggest that the cost is not inconsiderable. The Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences estimates that the cost of preserving one movie on film to be roughly $1,000 and to preserve that same movie digitally is $12,000. And that's right in line with a few estimates available for digital versus film paper media preservation. The National Archives itself estimates the cost of preserving digital records to be 10 times that of preserving paper records. We find ourselves again at the threshold of the Iron Triangle. Interpretation is where digital documentation really shines. Online, online viewing tools permit manipulation of electronic images that give the viewer an almost on-site experience. Many of our historic sites are fragile and the resources endangered. Fly-throughs and pano tours permit us to present these to the public and still to carry out stewardship responsibilities. These tools also enable the viewer to appreciate the resource in its broader geographic context. Some demonstrate to the viewer the 3D digital, 3D digital documentation process in its most salient aspects, and our most recent treats the viewer to an, un, to an animated experience of life a half a century ago crossing the Potomac River. As our skill with the process has grown and better software has become available, digital presentations have become more sophisticated and no longer resemble point clouds with lipstick. The data from each site on which laser scanning was used, all 75 that we've done so far, was carefully and painstakingly worked through the modeling, meshing, and flattening process, checked, verified, and complemented by data obtained through traditional means, and then carefully assembled so that the most significant aspects of the site were represented. The results are visually captivating, but very precise, accurate renderings of complex historic sites that give the visitor something unobtainable otherwise. And you can go online on our YouTube channel and view the dozen or so fly-throughs and pano tours we have available there. To give some examples, the Cairo, a Civil War era ironclad, now at Vicksburg National Historic Military Park in Mississippi, is very fragile resource and cannot be toured on the inside. Laser scanning permitted the documentation team to record much of that interior without inflicting further damage and allows the visitor to experience the ship's interior nonetheless. The historic Iceberg Rock Staircase at Carlsbad Caverns was built in 1925 to permit visitors to enter the caverns and was used through the 1950s until the park built winding trails. Dampness and mold have deteriorated the staircase and it will soon be removed. 3D laser scanning made possible a more thorough documentation than we could have done otherwise, given its poor condition, and the fly-through we made permits visitors to virtually tour a soon-to-be-gone park resource. The West Union Covered Bridge is one of a hundred of these rapidly disappearing resources that we have documented, out of, more than eight, under fewer, uh, out of fewer than 800 still remaining in the United States to this day, which is down from 10,000 at the turn into the 20th century. Using 3D laser scanning and a variety of software tools, we're able to locate the bridge with bridges within their geographic context and give viewers a better appreciation of the length and impressive engineering of these structures. The Arlington Memorial Bridge spanning the Potomac River between Washington, D.C. and Arlington, Virginia is an underappreciated architectural and engineering masterpiece. Constructed in 1933, its bascule span, which is the uh, span that raises, is, um, was engineered with the counterweight out of sight. Um, in other words, that's what the architects wanted and that's what the engineers complied with to give the bridge a city beautiful movement appearance and provide visitors with a seamless, view, seamless viewshed and a roadway directly from the monuments of the nation's capital to the cemetery of its national heroes. The 3D laser scan that, that we've had set up at the table outside um, assist, um, gives people an opportunity to view something that really hasn't been viewed or hasn't been, um, well, I can't get the mechanics to go on here, so uh, we'll leave that go to the more technically able. All right, anyway, um, just to conclude, we're back to the Iron Triangle. Um, 3D laser scanning documentation, if it is to be useful 
for actual site preservation requires sufficient time in the field to ensure accurate data capture, including the use of supplementary documentation techniques like hand measuring and survey, as well as post-capture time to translate the data into formats useful for site stewards, like measure drawings. The creation of a permanent digital record, maintenance and migration of files, and sustainability of hardware platforms is far more costly than similar requirements for hard copy and is yet to achieve consensus between public and private sectors. Digital interpretive products depend on quality data and both the skill and time to transform data from a variety of sources via myriad software packages to formats that can both educate the viewer and inculcate an appreciation of the significance of the resource. It may seem like we've come a long way <clears throat> um, from traditional hand recording and presentation techniques to 3D laser scanning and digital presentation, but we've yet to escape the reality that quality is neither fast nor cheap. Thank you.